In this video we're going to look at temperature regulation. We're going to talk about the broad range of temperatures that are found in the world as opposed to the narrow range of temperatures that certain species are found in. We'll then look at the difference between ectothermic and endothermic organisms. So the broad world range. In the world, there's a very large range of temperatures. So we've got things like the Antarctic and Arctic, which are very, very cold, down to volcanic hot springs, which are very, very hot. And any organisms that are living in these environments need to be able to deal with the change in temperatures in these environments. And those change in temperatures can be on a seasonal basis, so the difference between summer and winter, or on a daily basis with the difference between night and day. Generally, in an aquatic environment, the daily temperature range doesn't change very much, while in a terrestrial environment, it can change quite a bit. Now, although in that broad temperature range, we find organisms living from the very, very cold to the very, very hot, the largest range for biodiversity is found at between 0 and 45 degrees Celsius. However, each individual species that is found in these temperature ranges has a much narrower temperature range where it can live. And the reason for that is that the enzymes that it produce are only able to work efficiently in a small, much smaller temperature range. So what I'm trying to say here is that animals that live in the desert, such as the thorny devil, are adapted so that the enzymes in them work in that higher temperature range. And if you were to take that thorny devil and put it into a more moderate climate, it would not be able to survive. Conversely, uh, things that live in cold temperature ranges, like penguins, uh, have enzymes in them and mechanisms for them to deal with that extreme cold environment. However, if you were to put them in a temperate environment, they wouldn't be able to survive there either because the enzymes would be outside of their optimal range. So although we have this large range and organisms are found everywhere in the range, uh, particular organisms are only found in very small parts of that temperature range. Now the ranges that a particular species is able to inhabit depend on a number of things. And one of the things depend on whether they're ectotherms or endotherms. So firstly, ectotherms, uh, what you may have heard referred to as cold-blooded animals, so they don't produce their own energy, rather they rely on the energy from the environment to heat up their bodies. Uh, so endotherms might be seen out in the sun sunbaking in order to absorb some of that heat energy and warm up their bodies. Because they don't create their own energy, they find it hard to regulate body temperature. So this fluctuates in the environment, so if it's a cold night, for example, the temperature will drop quite significantly. And if it's a hot day, the temperature will rise quite significantly. So you see quite a large daily uh, change in temperature of the core, uh, that's core body temperature of ectotherms. And this limits them in a couple of ways. Firstly, it means that they're not as active uh, in cooler weather. So the enzymes inside them aren't working at most efficiently as they would be if it was a bit warmer. Uh, so you see ectotherms like reptiles, uh, they in cold environments are very, very slow, don't move around very much, while in hot environments are much more active. And it also limits the environments that these ectotherms are able to survive in. So they generally are found in hotter environments because they can be more active. Uh, it's, for example, you're not going to find uh, reptiles or snakes uh, down in the Arctic. It's too cold for them and the enzymes don't work well enough for them. What you will find down in the Arctic are endotherms. These are warm-blooded animals and they produce their own heat internally. And this heat's usually uh, produced by something like the respiration reaction uh, that creates heat as a byproduct of that. But what that means is that for this reaction to occur, they have a much higher demand for energy uh, to produce this heat. So they have to eat a lot more food to get the energy to increase. But the benefit of this is that their body temperature doesn't change. Their core body temperature stays the same. And generally it stays a little bit hotter than the environment in which they live in. 
This means that they are not at the mercy of environment and can live in those colder areas so they don't, aren't restricted to the hot areas only and therefore there's a larger range of areas on the earth in which they can live. So in this video we've looked at the broad world range from the Arctic through to hot springs and we find life in all of those temperatures. However, the individual species we only find in a small, narrow range of, the, of temperature, and that's due to the enzymes and the activity of those enzymes changing outside of the ideal temperature. We talked about ectothermic, cold-blooded organisms, which absorb heat from the environment, and they're therefore at the mercy of the environment in both where they can live and how active they can be in the places that they live. And we looked at endothermic organisms, which are not reliant on the environment to produce heat for them. They produce their own heat and therefore can live in a larger range of temperatures, however, have a much higher demand for food.